NorthJerseySports.com multimedia presentation is brought to you by Complete Performance Baseball Academy, where there is no off-season. Are you ready to embrace the grind? Team camps, infielders camps, CPBA-sponsored club teams starting at the U13 level and going up. It is an immersive baseball experience led by some of Bergen County's most respected coaches and former high-level players. Want to go deep? Private instruction is always available at our state-of-the-art facility at 22 Commerce Road in Fairfield, New Jersey, where we lay the groundwork for social, emotional, and physical growth as a person, player, and teammate. Visit our website at CompletePerformanceBaseball.com. Hit us on Twitter at CPB Academy. Complete Performance Baseball. Sounds good. Original multimedia series talking all things baseball across North Jersey. This is season three, episode two. I am Corey Doviak, and it is also the long awaited debut as our co host returns, the Woodridge Athletic Director, the newly uh, anointed Hall of Fame North Jersey baseball coach. He of the 99 career wins, he is Joey Fashion Show, Cetera. Joe, what's going on? Well, the first thing, right off the bat, you're wrong. It's not 99. It was 199. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's get that straight. The second thing is, I'm a little annoyed that I'm on episode two, wasn't even called for episode one, and on that episode, I was shown no respect by one Brandon Flanagan, and Corey Doviak. So we're starting off the season on a very, very sour note. But I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure we will pick it up as, as the show goes on. But it's, good yeah, to, I, but it's good to be back. Well, it's great to have you back, Joe. You. And, you know, I, I, I will agree with you on one thing. Well, first of all, you know, 199 wins. You are correct. I, I, might, I always say I'm a man of words, not of numbers. Terrible <laughs> at math. And I will have to agree with you that, you know, Brandon Flanagan – Listen, it's been brutal. We'll talk about the weather and all this stuff because it's such a big part of the story here, the early season of right. North Jersey baseball. It's been awful. Brandon Flanagan was nice enough to jump on last week, give me 20 minutes of his time. He gave us a show when we had no other coverage because, uh, you know, there just weren't any games being played. The Let me guess. Awful. Let me guess. He told you during the whole show that they weren't going to be that good and he doesn't know how good they're going to be. They're young. They got a few new guys in some key spots, and I didn't even listen. Once I heard him start ripping me, I just clicked off and, and, and shut the show off because I didn't. I wasn't even there to have my own my, my, defend myself. But guess what? Just like I told you a few minutes ago, Brandon was up in the top of the seventh and took the lead. I'm up in the bottom of the seventh, buddy. Here we go. Here we go, Flanagan. Right. Everyone knows you're going to be good, Flanagan. You're not going to see anybody's number three. You're getting everybody's number one. Now deal with it. <laughs> All right, we got a lot of things that we're going to deal with here on this show t- uh, today, and I'm excited about it. We are going to talk Woodridge baseball, and not because you are the athletic director at no, Woodridge High School. No, it would High not school. be. Why would that be? Uh, it would not be because it is the fact that the Blue Devils are the hottest team in New Jersey under the coldest circumstances ever. We're going to talk to Blue Devil head coach Mikey, and yes, it's still Mikey until he wins a state tournament game, but he's getting a lot closer oh, to Mike come on. with the start that he has had this season. Uh, they have had an unbelievable amount of come-from-behind victories here. In fact, four in a row to start the season, each one crazier than the last one. Obviously, as we taped this here on Saturday afternoon, they had a big win today, so that streak ended, but not the winning streak. We're going to talk to Mikey. And, Joe, you know, let's not talk too much about it now because we'll no. do it when Mikey comes on. But, uh, listen, the Blue Devils are off to a flying start. They are. Uh, and, you know, I see the kids a lot in the hallway, and, and I, you know, you just know how the type of guy that Mike is. It's, he's, he's excited about it. You know, there's, there's uh, a lot of air in the program right now, and, and everybody's walking around with their chest out, and they feel good about it. But they all know, you know, to a kid, because it comes from their coaching staff, that it's not how you're playing now. You know, it's 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 great to be out out of the gate that quickly, um, and to get this good start and get a good jump on the league and everything. But at the same time, it's 
you got to be doing these same things at the end of the year. And the way they prepare every day and we watch them prepare, they're, they're going to be fine. Yes, uh, we'll, we'll get into it specifically with Mikey. We're also going to talk to Joe Gambardella, the head coach of the Why? Ridgefield Royals. Was he having and... another beefsteak? Is he doing another beefsteak or something? <laughs> does, somebody, does somebody have to buy into one of his fundraisers? Is that why we're having him on? That actually should be your sponsor, the Joe Gambardella beefsteak for Ridgefield Baseball, because they have one every week. Duncan, the guy Duncan is setting up, you know, Ferris wheels and bounce houses at the field. He can't play games because, come on, enough. What are we going to talk about? <laughs> well, we are going to talk. You mentioned sponsorship. Joe Gambardella is a founding partner of the Complete Baseball Academy, uh, which is our brand new show sponsor, and we certainly do appreciate that. So we're going to a thank him, and then b we are going to talk about the Richfield Royals, one of the most steady Group One programs around here. I mean, you talk about Group One baseball, you got to mention Richfield, you got to mention defending state champ Emerson. Uh, you know, Waldwick has put together good programs. Woodridge trying to join the party this year, too. But uh, always good to talk to Joe Gambardella. Yes. And the greatest thing about it is that when you are on with him, there's fireworks. So I can just sit back and relax. Oh, it's great. It's great. That's all there is. You should have seen a vacation in, in LBI last summer. <laughs> well, we could, we, could, we could talk about that, too, because you guys no. will be doing all the talking, and I can hit the bleep button. <laughs> no, 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 no. Come on, I have a different role now. You know, I can't, I can't be dropping those things. The only time, the only time the foul language comes onto the show is when uh, Barton's on the show because he just, he just brings it out of you. Um, there won't be, a, there will not be any bleeps today. I promise you. Now, it, it, before we move on here, is it yeah. true that uh, it is under your? You are the co-host of the show. You are a founding member of this show. Okay. So, uh, is it true that you were the one who put the kibosh on Richie Ballgame's appearance here today? Uh, it is true. It is true because to be quite honest with you, I can't. I can't take him. I, 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 no matter what he walks when he walks into the Woodridge gym, which I forget, I think he was there. I think he was there during the um, our winter tournament. Um, and uh, yes. as soon as I saw, as soon as I saw him walk through, the, it's not like when you walk through the gym, buddy. When he walks through the gym, there's just the air gets sucked right out of it because it's just there's just a negative negative vibe that that emanates throughout the gymnasium. He, has, he does nothing but make fun of my ties, my clothes. He's got nothing better to do. He's the most insecure person on the face of the earth. Walks in with that stupid camera and those dumb lights, and he forgets his recorder. He, he's just a mess. It's just a mess. When you see Richie B. walk in, is it kind of like walking out to your car and seeing you have a flat tire? Is it that same yeah, kind of Yeah, actually, no, actually four, actually four flats. <laughs> All right. Last thing before we uh, get to the business of interviewing some coaches, I want to mention too. I have been an intrepid reporter this last week, and you know, you know me, Joey. I would never pat myself on the back. I mean, never. Uh, you know. So, but I will say that I have been roughing it this week. I had covered three baseball games so far in inclement conditions. Two of them this past week, which have just been frozen fingers central. Uh, I did Dumont's win over Ridgefield Park, so I have an interview with Jay Kinesi that will play. And was, that his yesterday, two, was that his 200th victory? It was his 201st victory. Oh, uh, was okay. Well, why didn't, you do his, why didn't you do his 200th? That's a bigger milestone for the guy. Not 200, yeah. I, well, if you also know me, you know I'm always a day late and a dollar short. So uh, And numbers don't, mean, numbers don't mean anything to you. So uh, who am I to question that? You're right. You cover the 201st game. Good. You know what we could do, though? Because he did get his 200th win, we could ask him to give you 201. That would put you at an even 200. No, You know what? And I would absolutely appreciate that because Sitch keeps asking me to this day that I got to finish on the round number. And if it meant anything to me, I would take that offer. But it means nothing because 200 <laughs> wins, 200 wins and $2 get you a bus ride with a bunch of people who don't care. That's true. Ninety. <laughs> that's absolutely correct. So I also covered yesterday. Old Japan is off to a good start. They are three and zero. Beat Demrest yesterday in the neighborhood rivalry at Demrest in forty two degree temperatures with twenty five mile an hour swirling winds, which was great. But I got some sound with Tim Byron. We will play that later in the show too. All right, Joe. Well, let's move on here to the guest heavy portion of this edition of Talking Baseball here. And it's a, a first time that we are going to introduce guests as uh, officially as we are officially sponsored by the Complete Baseball Academy. So joining us right now on the Complete Baseball Academy hotline are three members of the Red Hot 
Woodridge Blue Devils, starting with the head coach, Mikey Karsich. Mikey, what's going on? Just for uh, future reference, just so you know, every time you call me Mikey Karsich, I get 15 text messages from everyone breaking my chops about it. But I still love it, so you can keep doing that. Well, you know the deal. I mean, we're going to get that first state tournament win. We're going to get through that first uh, I round. Told to, I, get... I, I told him not to bring that up. So if you keep saying that before you were on the air, when he gets the when when he gets his first state tournament win, we're going to stop calling him Mikey. We're going to stop calling him Mikey. You know, every time the guy comes to a game, we lose. He, I, I don't know what it is with him not and you. True. I, not you know. true. Not true. I am I am the good luck charm of the Woodridge Blue Devils, and I, I will. What? Be, what's your middle What's your middle name, Mikey? Mikey Anthony. And just for the record, my first year at Woodridge, we had two state wins that got to the state sectional semifinals. However, like I said, we've been on a schneid the last three years where we've got bounced out. But we do have two state wins while being at Woodridge. We're going to break the schneid this year, and we will officially refer to you from that moment forward as Michael Anthony Carsage. How about that? (laughs) That's fine. I'll I'll take it and run with it. At least I won't get my balls broken anymore. (laughs) All right. So we also have sitting next to you over there Joe Bacho and Tom Luzzi. Uh, two guys who are part of this great run, but my, uh, now you got me all confused. I, Mr. Carsage, shall we uh, <laughs> talk about this start? Because this is crazy. I know today you had the big win over Seacock. It's 14 nothing. I believe that gets you to 5-0. and Is that correct? 5-0, and yeah. It's one of the best starts we've had here so far, or at least the most exciting start. You know, we, we, to try to match our best start, we got to get at least five or six more wins. But for uh, for us to come down, you know, back four games that we were down, Two in walk off fashion after being down ten nothing to Lynnhurst in the fourth and six nothing to Marys in the seventh. You know, it's one of the most exhilarating starts to a baseball season we've ever had, even in this cold weather. You know, we feel like we're playing pretty decent baseball. Yes, and it, I mean, you you came back to beat Richfield ten two. You were down two nothing in that game. You were down four nothing against Weehawk, and so really, your first four wins were all in comeback fashion, yes, one sir. greater than the next. And uh, you know, I'll go to Joe Batchel here because I was there on opening day when he threw a gem against Richfield. Joe, how about this feeling, this team? I mean, you guys got to feel like, you know, make it 32, make it snow. We don't care. We're going to go out and win a baseball game. Yeah, um, we're definitely uh, playing really well. And uh, no matter what, we're going to play our baseball. We're doing very good. All right, Joe. Satara, you got, uh, you know, these kids are, you're helping to mold their futures. You are one of the bright young educators in the all of North Jersey community. Easy. Why don't you ask some people a question? Tommy Luzzi? Tommy Luzzi. Go ahead and ask him something. Tommy. What's up? Tommy, you there? Oh, all right. I thought I'm you were here. sleeping, pal. Everything okay? Is everything all right? Nah, everything's great right now. Uh, we're playing great. All right, good. Let me ask you something. You you had offensively, offensively, you had a pretty good week, um, you know, coming coming into this season. There were some, some expectations. You guys in the hallway were talking about the year and the season, and you know, you. I, I've watched you progress, uh, having the ability to see you. what's different. What's different about this team? What, what's the feel right now? The feel right now is that we are. This is probably one of the closest teams I've ever been on as teammates. Um, we all hang out after the games. We're all friendly. I love these guys to death, and I just love playing baseball with them. Mikey, how much seen, easier does that make? It? No, because, you know, we've talked so many times about the the group one mentality where, you know, you get a group of seniors, you hope to follow them through, you know, you watch the growing pains first couple of years, then you see it maybe start to click a little bit and then it really comes together. Seems like it has so far for you guys. Uh, For you, this has to be, you know, you know, that, that group one style, it's got to be very, I don't want to say fulfilling for you because it's only five games into the season, but you can't be doing much better than you are right now. Yeah, you you kind of hit the nail right in the coffin there. It's, you know, for for us to be successful in a Group One team, you know, we we got to be play fundamentally sound baseball, have decent pitching, make routine play, and obviously have time when hits. Obviously, in any level, that's the winning ingredient. But what we haven't had was one solid senior class that are all tight knit. We've had you know different factions, if you will, where three kids hang out together, then three other kids hang out together, but maybe they don't hang out with the juniors. From sophomores to juniors to seniors. This team, like they said, they, they hang out together before and after the game. They're 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 great team chemistry, and that's obviously one of the reasons that we're having success this year. And as I uh, was saying before, one of the things we did last year was we opened up our rotation to go four man to try to get our would be starters this year a lot of work. We you know we got a lot of playing time down there to some of these other younger kids that were potentially sophomores or juniors to obviously balance out our lineup this year. And you know 
pitching wise, I think we're, we're we're definitely a good pitching team. I don't know if we're necessarily the best pitching team we've had, but hitting wise, this is the best one through nine I've had in the five years that I've been at Woodridge. Yeah, and you can see it too because you know, again, going mostly off the day I was there, but then also following along with what's happened since. I mean, one through nine in the order, I know it was Anthony Trano who had the walk-off hit for you yesterday. Yep. So, you know, I don't know if he hit ninth yesterday, but he hit ninth the day I was there. And when you get that kind of production out of the bottom of the lineup, pretty good. Uh, it's funny you say this. I'm going to just talk about this for two seconds with that lineup spot. Anthony Trano got that, you know, that you know, batted ninth that first game. And then we actually put a kid, Mike Kinston, in, who had a big, uh, you know, big at-bat against Linhurst to actually tie it up. And he was DHing for Trano for the last two games. Yesterday against St. Mary's, he was still DHing for Trano. We ended up putting in Timson to pitch, so Trano came out of the game. Timson got the win, actually, for pitching two innings in relief and just keeping him at bay. Then we re-entered Anthony Trano in the top of the seventh. He made the first out on a hard ground ball to second. We batted back around. He comes up. We have a first and third situation. Anthony has two strikes on him. We do a stretch deal to scratch a run. Now, previously in that game, the first game we did a stretch deal, but we didn't run it correctly, and we missed out on a run. We corrected it in a huddle. Then, the, you know, the seventh inning comes, we actually score the tying run that way in a close play with a pinch runner, Chris Musanti, that came in. And then with two strikes after and a man now in scoring position, Anthony Trano gets a game-winning hit. So our number nine fielder and hitter won the game on the mound and won the game at the plate. <laughs> that Joe Sotera, that means cool. that uh, Mikey Carson is pitch, pushing some good buttons over there. Well, yeah. I told you before. I, I, I hope I hope you listened to the to the beginning of the show. Oh, actually, no, Corey. This was just in conversation. I All said right. So should we should we Joe should we, should we set this up a little bit then for you? Set it up. Set it up. Here we go. Set it up. All right. Listen set to it this. Up. Set it up. And now it is time for the segment that everybody has grown to love here on Talking Baseball. It's unbelievable. It's the Joey Fashion Show. <laughs> Rant. Oh, wasn't even a blip on the radar. The week. My kids are running around. Sponsored by Moe's Southwest Grill. Good to be back. Put some hot sauce on. The floor is yours, Joe. Thank you. Now, what I was saying to you before, Corey, when we were on the phone, was that was that it's going to be difficult for me because obviously, as as a, a big supporter of Mike before I came here, and a, fr- a, a friend of his before I became the athletic director uh, and VP at, at Woodridge. To actually see him in action is, you know, is I knew what what we were what we had in him coming in, but now to watch him practice every day, to watch the calls that he makes in the game, to watch the buttons that he pushes in every game, this was last year. You know, last year he he's not any different. Um, you know, I, I think he's he's one of the best coaches in Bergen County. Um, the way he prepares, the way those kids are in the gym, on the field, uh, mentally, uh, we're very fortunate to have him uh, as a head coach. Um, and yesterday, I told you yesterday that he pushed every button in that situation because there was a lot of calls that had to be made in, the, in that bottom. Mike, and I'm not going to steal your thunder, but there were, there were some calls that had to be made in the bottom of that seventh inning um, that you know weren't necessarily easy things to do but had to be done at the right time, and these kids had to execute at the right time. And the only reason why the kids execute at the right time is because of their preparation by their coaching staff and by their ability. So – Ability is one thing, but if they're not prepared well, and you know Mike does an excellent job, his entire staff um, is is fantastic. We got we got a couple of new addition. Actually, we got a new addition to the staff that it's very uh, that's been that's been a positive influence in the program as well. You know, when when you're surrounded by good people, there's success, and and that's that's what's going through the baseball program right now. It's a great rant. But, Mikey, I hate to tell you, that is the dreaded vote of confidence from the athletic director. I like it. And we tell Come them on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I thought we were going to call him out for the millions of people that listen to this podcast. This guy is, keep, is just very, you know, I keep telling him to coach a game, get one win. <laughs> it's not happening. All fame tomorrow. <laughs> and even my players, Joe Bancho and Tom Lundy, said the same thing. If you guys don't already know that are listening, Coach Satara is going to be inducted to the New Jersey State Hall of Fame sectional championship winner, and he won't. he's too humble to take number 200 from me, to take one win from me to be get 200. But I love working we'll for it. Joseph. It's actually really nice. I've had four different ADs here, I think, in five years, and now that I actually got an AD that's a baseball guy that I can actually lean on for advice and you know, have him in the school is just an outstanding thing. And believe it or not, that also attributes to a lot of our success as well. 
I knew this was going to turn into a Woodridge love fest, but I took the chance Six. anyway. All right, I'm going to talk to you guys here. Yeah, get Wuzzy. Uh, Wuzzy, hey, talk, ask Wuzzy some questions, please. The kid hit, what did he hit this week, Sitch, 800? This, this kid is 818 right now, 9 for 11 this week, 818 average, six runs, seven RBIs, a double, and two walks. Let me tell you something. If All he's right. not athlete of the week, I'm writing a letter. Well, let me tell you this: you steal him now. Now you steal my thunder, Satara, because I was just going to ask. Tommy I'm a co-host. Do you think I'm co-host? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Do you think Tommy Luzzi that uh, that should serve as your nomination for the NorthJerseySports.com Athlete of the Week? Uh, I think so. Yeah, good. So That's just it. talk about this start for you. I mean. Uh, you know, you guys have have all been playing well. I don't think there's a spot in the lineup or a spot in the uh, fielding rotation there that's not playing well. But, you know, h- how's this been for you? Uh, give us your perspective on just, you know, getting out there every day and doing what what's asked of you. Uh, it's been great. You know, in the off season, I tried to go to the cages a lot, you know, work on my swing, work on driving the ball more. And I just get up there with the mentality to just hit the ball, you know, make contact with the ball in the play, put the ball in play, and uh, good things are going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Joe Bacho, how about you as, you know, a pitcher playing some shortstop too, uh, doing, you know, a bunch of, again, at a group one school, everybody's got to do a bunch of different things. It's not like you have 400 kids on the roster. So, you know, uh, talk about what you guys are hoping for this year and really the team aspect of what's carried you so far. Um, well, our hopes this year are the same as any other year. Nothing changes. We want to uh, do, uh, do good in state. Hopefully, win a state sectional title. We want to get that one county win that we uh, try to uh, strive for every single year and contend in the league. And I think we can do all three of those uh, easily. Um, but uh, we can't take anything easy, and we got to play hard no matter what uh, under any circumstance. Yes. Uh, yeah, you guys did. You had the great county win last year at Pascag Valley. I mean, it's a double edged oh, sword for me. Win. Yeah, and I was happy for you, but it also got me banned from the stadium over there at Pascag Valley. I'm not allowed to cover another game over there. I have to go see them on the road, watch them win, and then maybe they'll let me back. But that's not your problem. It's my problem. I think the rallying cry for this year, Joseph Terry, maybe you can back it up, is we should get T-shirts made that say, like, you know, call him Mike. Because if we get that state tournament win this year, the first one under your regime as the athletic director over there, maybe that's the way we should term this. Uh, we'll call him Mike. So some T-shirts, Joe. I, I know a guy over at uh, Sports Time, North Jersey's premier custom apparel provider. You know, also an advertiser here on the website. Maybe I can I'm call sure, him. I'm sure. I'm sure they would. I'm sure they would accommodate us. Um, but I, I would prefer call him Sitch um, because that, that's that's what I call him. So whatever you want to do, call him Mike. Call him Sitch. But let's please stop calling him Mikey. He's not four years old. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, the Sitch name has long since been uh, taken by a guy who won 500 wins in his career. Oh, no, so no, no, that no, no, one's no. off the No, tape. it's it's been it's been it's being carried on in, in, in quite some successful fashion with uh with uh with uh, Sitch Jr. over here. That's how he's in my phone, Sitch Jr. I don't even I don't think I've ever called him Mike Mikey. Let the guy be. It's funny <laughs> right, maybe we'll cover Sorry. Hey, Sitch, Mike, I, hey, Sitch I'm it's, Sitch, I'm glad you're with us, buddy. That's all I'm going to say. I'm glad you're in Woodridge, pal. Thank you. I'm I'm glad to be here too. So I go out to breakfast with my old man and my daughter this morning, and it's funny because my daughter, you know, will actually hear my wife call me Sitch at times, and then I actually introduced her to the original Sitch man, OG Sitch, if you will. And now, <laughs> now she's calling my dad Sitch and says, "I'm not Sitch. He's Sitch. We call him Papa Blue. Now he's Papa Sitch." So unfortunately, I'm never going to get the name. <laughs> I'll tell you maybe when he passes, but Sitch Man is Sitch Man. He's got the 500 wins. I'm just trying to get there. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe we'll come to a nice compromise. We'll call you Sitchy. <laughs> <laughs> Sitch, maybe, Sitch, maybe I could take you. See, that's that's another reason why I'll never take. I mean, you just you know you get to 500. What happens? I step in, I get the one. Now I'm at 200, and you finish your career at 499. You know how bad I feel for the rest of my life? Not doing yeah. it, buddy. Listen, if I'm not putting that money. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, think of think of all the fun we could have on that show when we talk about that. Anyway, and hey, listen, this has been great. Congratulations on a great start to the season, uh, Michael Anthony Carsich. Thank you for joining us here on T- Talking Baseball. Joe Bacho and Tommy Luzzi. Sorry we subjected you boys to this, but we also uh, wish you continued success with the rest of your season. And uh, listen, the Woodridge community is finally is finally and firmly behind. 
the North Jersey Sports.com Twitter account. I'm getting inside information after each one of your games. There I you am go. tweeting away with the Jimmy results. Jimmy, have a I noticed that. That's yeah. right. And I noticed that the uh, the community is following along, so we will continue to, that, to do that. We will keep a close eye on the Blue Devils. And uh, all three of you gentlemen over there, thanks for hey, joining us here Cork, on Talking Baseball. Cork, Cork. Right, one more right. thing. Thank you, Joseph. Joseph. Uh, Joseph. Joe. Bacho and, uh, stop getting in the way. Stop getting in the way when the boys are going to thank me um, for having I them on the I show. I didn't hear them speaking. Boys, I apologize for that. But just do me a favor. Make sure you're in school on time on Monday morning, all right? Just, I know you're 5-0 <laughs> and oh and everything, but there's going to be no preferential treatment, all right? Make sure we're in class on time. Thank you. Go ahead, Cork. <laughs> all right, boys. Now thank me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right, boys, continue good luck. We'll talk to you down the road. Hit it, Cor. Hit it. <laughs> I got nothing to hit, Joe, but I used all my good stuff. Oh, no, wait, I do have something. Yeah. Here you go. Aging Dr. Cirillo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, last thing. I know, uh, boys, if you ever do get in trouble and uh, you need, you know, get out of jail free card a little bit, I know the, the vice principal over there at Woodridge can be pretty tough. Remember, he's the guy who once said this live on the air. Hey, Cor, yes. be back. We can't find my son, James. I got to call you back. This, this is not good. We're in panic mode right now. So you should not, he should not be throwing stones at other people's children. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you soon. All right, thanks. All right, Joe, that was fun stuff there with the Woodridge gang talking to Mikey Korsich and the boys. Uh, they are off to a good start here. But you know what? Now we're going to switch gears to another program which has had a tremendous amount of success the last couple of years. As we welcome in a guy, well, we're going to welcome him in twofold here because not only is he the head coach of the fight in Ridgefield Royals, two-time defending state sectional champions, but he is also a proprietor of the title sponsor of this very show that we are talking on right now. He is Ridgefield head coach and our newest sponsor, Joe Gambardella. What's up, Gams? What's going on, fellas? We are, uh, you know, passing the time here until the sun comes out. So, you know, uh, maybe around June 1st we'll get some games in that uh, I don't have to wear uh, gloves and a hat and everything else. But before we talk about Richfield, which I definitely want to do, I want to talk about the Complete Performance Baseball Academy. Let me get that straight. And if you look up from your computer or look down at your phone right now, there's a graphic on there because you are joining us on the Complete Performance Baseball Academy Hotline. Wow. So give us, wow. Yes. Big give time us a quick right there. Rundown of, yeah, give us a quick rundown of the facility and what you guys are trying to get done over there. And tell us who works uh, for you, Go on. <laughs> we got a free title facility. I mean, we're just different, and we don't want to just take money from every kid. We want to go up there and, and coach kids that want to work. I mean, we want people to put on our jersey that want to have pride and learn how to play the game the right way. I mean, we will work as hard for you as we want you to work for us. You know what I mean? Like, there's kids from all ages up there. Hitting with us, you know what I mean? Training with us, pitching with us, defense, everything. We just uh, had five high schools up at team camp this winter. I think Satara worked a couple of camps. It went really well. Uh, we're stoked about what's going on there, and we're looking to grow it from, from today going forward. Wait a minute. Joe Satara, you are supposed to come clean with that type of information in uh, the interest of full disclosure. Well, you have to mention that you are an employee of the Complete Performance Baseball Academy. Well, I I did kind of I did kind of figure you guys would figure out the connection when I said you know Gams has a new facility with Charlie Chiquetti and you know I was a part of it and I, I guess I guess I didn't come clean enough but it is I have been up there numerous times my kids have participated in uh, in their little league uh, portion of what they've done and um, I think anybody that's listening to this show and knows anything about high school baseball knows that there there are guys up there that are just you know, great baseball guys, and and they're not going to just yes you to death and tell you your kid's the greatest uh, the greatest player, and, and and take a check every week. They're they're going to work hard and they're going to pick out the flaws and they're going to correct them. And you know, I apologize for for not uh, disclosing that I was an employee of this. Is, is it a conflict of interest now? Is it a conflict uh, that he's on the, he's on the air? He's on the air. I'm an athletic director and I work for them. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been on NorthJerseySports.com, but it is one uh, floating conflict, <laughs> a conflict of interest. It is, I it, is, it is a complete conflict of interest, and I, I wonder <laughs> now if people are going to say, hmm, is there some sort of kickback going to Doviak or Satella? Well, 
for this interview. Well, it, I, I just wonder about that. I, I don't know. Well, in the interest of full disclosure, Complete Performance Baseball Academy is now a full-time sponsor on NorthJerseySports.com. So, I, so guess got, I, I guess I have to resign from one of the two <laughs> positions. And Me I'm, too. I'm, I'm going to have to sleep on it. I'm going to have to sleep on it. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but Joe Soter, brag a little bit about this place because, you know, Joe Gambardella uh, is uh, he's yeah. a baseball first guy and he is not going to brag because that is not a No, it's and it's it's a tough spot because again, uh just like when we had Fitz John talking about Woodridge baseball and and how good of a job he does, once again, um northersports.com has put me in a position where I'm going to sound like I'm, you know, having uh, a little bit of a of a bias towards a guest, but um <laughs> But that place, I mean, it's it's it is it is everything you want in a baseball facility. You know, there's no frills, there's no bells and whistles. Just you get in there, and whether you're nine years old or you're you're 17 years old, it's it's the same type of approach. It's the same type of of uh, coaching. Anybody that knows anything about Bergen County baseball knows that Gams and 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 Charlie are going to give it to you the way the game is supposed to be. It's it's a great facility. It's it's something that you know. Um, I would promote and I do promote because it's it's about baseball. It's not about it's not about collecting checks and collecting money. It's about getting your kids better and teaching them how to play the game the right way. And not even play the game the right way, but but there's a lot of talk about when the kids are there about how to approach the game and you know that the game is all about adversity and and you have to understand that you're going to fail and it's okay to fail. You have to be coachable and it, it's just everything you would want if you're really serious about baseball. So yeah, I'm glad they're a part of North Jersey sports.com and I'm, I'm very upset that I have to resign from working there. So I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think, it's, I think it's great. I think it's, it, it really is No, seriously. It's, it's a great thing. And, uh, I'm good. Do you have the phone number on the website? I hope you have actually, you should put Gams. You have Gams' cell phone number and just help you text them. There we go. Like, there we go. <laughs> well, like, yes, all of that all of that information can be found if you look at your screen currently. It's on the uh, this just, podcast it's, as we speak. It's, it's, it's also text Joey Gams. Text Joey Gams at baseball.com. It's, it's all on the ads. Uh, sprinkled around NorthJerseySports.com. And, uh, Gams, I'll ask you how Joe did, but I just want to chip in here a little bit because I can say this because I said it before you became a sponsor on the show, and if anybody's looking for the kind of baseball facility they want to send their kids to, take a minute, go out, and watch Joe Gambardella's Richfield teams. Not during the game. I mean, they're going to play the game right, and they're going to play the game hard. That's obvious. But watch the – I remember, and Joe Gambardell, we had this conversation when you – when I covered a game with you at Tenafly, the way oh. your kids walked in, the way they carried themselves, the way they respected the game, the way the shirts were tucked in, uh, the the way – you know, it, it just – it's baseball done right. And I can say that because I have the proof in previous podcasts of telling you the exact same thing even before you became a sponsor. So how do we do selling the product, Gams? You did a great job. Like like Sotera said, honestly, the name of the complete performance baseball, I think that kind of is our niche. Like, we're not up there just teaching it, and we're trying to teach you how to be a baseball player, how to prepare prepare you for failure, because the game is all about failure and how you handle it. You know what I mean? Nobody's out there patting you on the butt every time you're up there. You know what I mean? Putting the ball in the middle. I certainly was You did a great job. You know what I mean? So we're trying to prepare you as a complete baseball player, and, you know, from the nine-year-olds and the seven-year-olds like Joe's kids, we'd like to have you through college because, I mean, we think it's a, a relationship that can develop and grow as the kids grow and become engaged in the sport. You know what I mean? So all the, all that stuff being said, check them out. Uh, CompletePerformanceBaseball.com. The information's on our website. The information's on their website. They're all over the place. All right, let's talk some Richfield Royal Baseball. Suffered a setback on opening day to Joe Cetera's beloved Woodridge yeah. fighting Blue Devils. Bounce back with two straight wins here. I know you have a young team. It, it was funny watching you on opening day because, you know, you don't see the Katarinas running around. You don't see the Sants behind the plate and all that stuff. It's a new group, new bunch of kids. But uh, talk about them, Joe. Starting to get it. And I told everybody that has asked me how we're going to be, and I said we're going to get better as we go. The hardest thing to teach at a group one level is – experience. You can only go out and gain it. And playing J V baseball, and this is no disrespect to anyone that plays J V baseball, for us on our level, the speed of the game is not even close. Like we've played two lesser opponents, our conference game is the last two games so you outscored them twenty nine nothing. But I'm happy about the way we're running the bases, the way we're moving on pickoffs, the way we're moving on, on uh 
cutoffs and stuff like that. We're starting to get it. We're starting to be comfortable in our own skin. And when you're comfortable in your own skin, you start to get a little bit of confidence, and then confidence becomes contagious, and now we're starting to swing the bat. So I like what we see so far. We're going to get better as we go. We just need to keep getting more experience. Yeah, and, you know, talk about some of these young kids who are coming in to help you. You know, uh, there are some familiar faces, and you do have some uh, experienced guys in there that can help ease the transition. But uh, how about some guys that you're counting on here? Uh, my shortstop, he's played second base the last two years. He's an all-conference guy. He just gave one two sectional titles, two league titles in his first two years. So he thinks it's easy, but we moved him over to shortstop this year. He's actually attacking baseballs right now. I think he's six or ten on the year with six RBIs in three games. He's our leader. He plays the game the right way. He bodies up baseballs. He's a great example. Uh, we bring another starter back in Luke Correa, who we moved from shortstop to center field, who was three for three the other night. And our number one on the mound, Sean Kukin, is the third starter back. He's young still. He's a sophomore. He threw on Thursday, and it was supposed to be a side session because it was starting on Monday, and he had a no-hitter, and I told him, and he wasn't too happy with me, but that's the youth coming out, and he's going to get his work and get better as he goes as well. Yeah, and you don't want a kid to be happy to be pulled out of a game when no. he's pitching well. No. Right. No. Yep. All right, so Joseph Terry, go ahead and ask Gams a question. I don't know if I have any questions for him. My, my question <laughs> My question is, are there any beef steaks for Rick's Hill baseball coming up? Because, I mean, I feel like, you know, every week I'm getting an email from Duncan or you that, you know, please, please, uh, you know, buy into our pools. Please get into you our didn't fundraisers. Come to for Rick. You didn't show up. I'm still on the damn, I'm still on the damn clip, the, the, the damn thread, uh, Royals baseball update. I really don't care about Royals baseball. I, I, I care about Blue Devils baseball. No offense. But anyway, Joey, listen, you always seem to have, and I saw you guys up there. I coached a couple of your guys in that in that clinic that I did for you um, up there at your facility. You always seem to have young guys that, that fill roles and, and, you know, replace what you have and, and gain that experience. What do you think this year um, in, with the young guys that you have coming up? Like, I know you had a little, a little uh, second baseman, um, that looked like you know looked like he was going to play a role. He swung a pretty good bat up there at the facility in February. I mean, you know, where did you? Why do you think that that those guys are going to be such a big role for you? Play such a big role for you? I just think because the expectations and the way we do things don't change. So it's not like right. we're going to baby them and coach them along and hold them with kid gloves. We're going to put them in a spot and hold them accountable, and this is what we expect from them. Like we start a freshman at second base, first varsity at bat, he goes yard. He thinks the game's super simple, you know what I mean? Like, it, the kid competes his butt off. He's getting better every day. He's hard-nosed. Like, we're up 17 nothing the other day. He's bodying up for a baseball in the fourth inning. I mean, that stuff comes from expectations and, and a want from within, yeah. you know what I mean? Most guys well, that's why give up a game. You know what I mean? I think, you know, the yeah, no, you, and I, right way. you and I have talked a lot about what, what a program is and – uh we, we've talked about the meaning of a program, and, and that's, I think, you know, you pretty much surmise right there what it's all about. I mean, you look at this, the, the programs that are successful year after year after year, whether they're group one, group two, whatever. If you look at them, it's it's the expectations, and it's the fact that the coaches there do things the right way, and it's an expectation. And those expectations are what defines your program. So, you know, I, I the, 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 uh, the answer was there. I mean, you know, um, you guys have expectations, and it's program. Your your preseason program, and I'm not just saying it, but will you guys? Do oh yes, time? you are. He's a sponsor. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. I knew this. Listen to me. You listen. I'm either going to do this show in an unbiased fashion, or I'm not doing it Paging anymore. Dr. Cirillo. Uh, here it goes more. <laughs> yeah, there's. Tara. Where's the other one? Give me the one about my son. Hit hit me with James is lost. Hit me with James is lost. Hey, Cor, get yes. back. We can't find my son, James. I got to call you back. This, this is not good. We're in panic mode right now. <laughs> oh, my God. I still haven't left I live that day down that in my house. That still needs to be my ringtone. It needs to be my ringtone. Oh, it's great. It's great. I will send, I will send you the file. Oh, but Thank it's, you. It's just, no, but in, all, in all seriousness, it's, it's the fact that, you know, you, you, you do things a certain way. And, you know, when you're in March and your kids are sleeping there overnight and it's that chemistry. I mean, earlier on the show, we were talking to Mike uh, Karsich, as Corey likes to call him, Mikey. Uh, Mikey. We, were, we were talking about what it means to, number one, have talent, and number two, have leadership in your coaching staff, which you guys do. But I think in addition to that, you, you need to have the expectation. And 
and and the camaraderie and you guys doing that overnight stuff and sleeping at the school and all that. It's just, I mean, that's, that's bonding. And, and I think there's a lot to be said for you had the arms, you've had the talent, you've had the coaching, but what a lot of people overlook and, and what, you know, Mike talks a lot about at Woodridge is, is chemistry. And, and I think that's something you can't coach. And, and, you know, some schools have it and some do schools don't, but you guys seem to have it year after year. You just sit there. You just went on a twenty-minute soliloquy about how he's coaching all this stuff into his kids, and then you said it's something he can't coach. No, you, you can't can coach, coach it. No, no, no. What you weren't listening to, once again, oh, yeah. having not. And you're right. I wasn't listening. Having not coached, <laughs> having not coached the varsity sport, you were not listening <laughs> to the fact that I said you can have the coaching, you can have the talent, but you cannot coach chemistry, which is what they have year after year. So. You tell me. But that's program, like you, you said. That, that's what program thank you. is. Like, thank you, Dan, which is why we go on vacation. Thank you. Exactly. It's like my guys, it might be stupid, but after every game, they go to Buffalo Wild Wings together. All of them, all 16 of them, every game they go together. Like, they don't do that because they're forced. They do that because they're together. And when you're together, you're going to play to the guy to your left and the guy to your right. And that's the only thing we ever preach. You never play for yourself. If you're playing for yourself, we don't even want you in the program. Exactly. And, uh, you got that, Doviak? Joe, did you get that? Yes. I get, you know what also I get is the fact that I have never lost a game as a That's varsity true. coach. That's you know, true. Keep that. In. Joe, let me ask you this. Uh, you know, we this, this is uh, Joe's Sutera's first week here on the show, and we're getting this Group 1 stuff done first because we both love Group 1 baseball. Yes. Well, all three of us. Best baseball going love. because that's the most, the most coaching done at Group 1. Thank you. No yes. doubt. I love it. I love it. Uh, you guys love it, obviously. We're going to get to the bigger stuff later on down the year. There'll be plenty of time for that. But, uh, you know, talk about doing this at a Group 1 school where, you know, you had that great class of seniors last year. You, you, you went made a state final two years ago, won a section title again last year, you know, rode them. And, and we talked to Mikey Carsich about it earlier, about how he's got a real thick senior class right now, too. You're on the other side of it now. But just talk about, you know, the, the challenges of Group 1 that you don't face at another place. You know, where you're saying you're not trying to denigrate JV baseball. You know, in different parts of Bergen County, JV baseball is very competitive because their kids, you know, there's a lot of JV kids up in different parts of Bergen County that will be playing on your varsity team. So talk about the challenges of doing it uh, year in, year out at a Group 1 program when you don't have that one special class coming through, you know, in their wake. Well, to touch on last year, too, we had a lot of seniors, but a lot of those seniors, like, paid their dues. We were we had to return. I mean, we had to bring back a whole new outfield last year. Those guys never played varsity before. They just happened to be first-year seniors in the varsity lineup. But that touches on program. And in group one, my biggest thing, and my coaching staff is the same way, you need to coach mentality. You need to coach them all day in school. You need to be on top of everything they do. Like, Corey, I spoke to you in the opener. I didn't make an excuse for it. My starting center fielder – did something stupid in school, and I told him he was a knucklehead, and I didn't even bring him to the game because you need to make sure that in your mind the program comes first every day, and the second the program doesn't come first, then there's no way you're locked into that game that day. So I had to set an example, and from that point on, the kid has been great. But we have to coach every aspect of every kid without much depth behind it, which is a real hard thing to do. So that game versus Woodridge in, in the opener, this kid's my number two. He's supposed to come out of the bullpen. He's in Richfield. We're down 4-2. I can't go to the bullpen and go get him. Right there, right. though, we set his home for the season on. You mess up. Nobody's more important than this team. And we told you that from Jump Street. And I'm not a man of my word if I didn't act that way. So it's constant coaching, constant attitude adjustments. Like, we have curfew on Friday night. You know what I mean? We have all these things that we need to just drill home. Like, I monitor their social media. All the stuff that you need to be a royal off the field contributes to how you play the game on the field. That's just my belief. It might be wrong, but it's consistent no. coaching, and it's not just March to June. It's not wrong. I agree with you 100%, and that is why uh, <laughs> I highly recommend the Complete Performance Baseball Academy. It's that kind of instruction that you're getting uh, with kids who love to play baseball. It's great stuff. So, Joe Gambardella, Joe Sotera, anything else for him? I mean, I don't know what else we could say no, here. No, you know, you really, you really can't say too much. The future I mean, Hall of that's why, that's why you look at uh, absolutely future Hall of Famer. But when you look at when you look at Group 1 schools and you look at small schools and um, a lot of Group 1 schools lose kids to other schools, and I think the reason why when you go year after year after year, guys like, Joe, don't lose kids is because of the fact that there's a program there. 
and, and they don't just teach baseball and they don't just care about baseball. They're in the weight room, you know, 12 months out of the year. They're not, they're not just a three month out of the year sport that, you know, they're in the summer, they're in the fall, they're in the weight room. And there's, there's a culture there now. And, and I think not only do the kids in the school buy into it, but the community buys into it. And that that's anybody that that's a small school that wants to be successful uh, and needs a model on, on, on what to do. I mean, they, they've done it year after year. They, they did it, you know, back when I was at New Milford, it was, it was still a great program. And, and, you know, Joe has just carried on and improved and enhanced on it. So, you know, they're doing a great job over there. Uh, needless to say, um, you know, I'm, I'm a blue devil guy now, so we will, uh, hopefully, you know, not run into them in the state playoffs, but, uh, we're yeah. in a different bracket. It might be- yeah. Oh yeah. Well, it right. could be a state sectional semifinal. That's right. And it, it, we could so, run into you there. If, I mean, yeah, different bracket, but we could still run into you, pal. Yeah, but could Corey, be the group one. Yes. Two things on Terry just touched on, and he's been around our program a lot. I need to touch on two things. I have five coaches that work their tails off uh, in the off season in the school, and we have a community that backs us. Like, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Like, we hosted a JV tournament today. Bergen Catholic Wayne Hills got rained out at Breslin. We played three, three JV tournament games because we were raking a field in between innings, half innings, with volunteers. You know what I mean? So when you want to yeah. do something and people have pride in it, they'll go out and do it. Like, we're going to play tomorrow night, and there'll be 200 people at the game tomorrow night at 7 o'clock in the cold, guaranteed, because we're playing. So, like, I need to make sure that those guys, my assistant coaches, are tremendous, and the community really backs us 100%. So I just want to make sure that that is noted, that that's part of all the success we have. I can think of two guys who will not be there Me? for the night game. I'm on. <laughs> this guy would be number two. That's why I caught you on opening day in the uh, relative sunshine. It was enjoyable. Joe Gambardella was an outstanding guest. Joey, thank you. Thank you, man. I'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Good stuff there with Richfield head coach Joe Gambardella and also the proprietor of the Complete Performance Baseball Academy, our brand-new title sponsor here on Talking Baseball Joe Cetera, it's good to have you back in the fold, my friend. Corey, it's good to be back. I'm just a little disappointed that there weren't more clips played. I mean, you know, coming in, you you had told me that there was, you know, you had some sound bites and some stuff going on. Um, I had told you that I had some some targets that I was shooting at, one of them being Brandon Flanagan, the other one being Gambardella when he come on. I mean, I can't, right. I can't, I can't shoot at my own my own coach. I mean, he's just Mike's just unbelievable. But um, you know, it's it's such a it's kind of an the season has kind of gotten off to like you got some teams that play two games, some teams that play four or five games, depending on whether you had turf or not. Teams just can't get into a rhythm, and and you know the weather kind of takes away from from what coaches do and and their preparation and everything because you you, you get so stale being in the gym and everything. But I'm glad to be back. Um, I'm glad that Barton wasn't a part of the show. Me um, too. Uh, you know, I'm glad that we, we, for the first time, we had some we had some kids on the show, um, and and yep. you know we're going to kind of open up to that. And I know I know we have some plans to uh, to enhance the show later on down the road. And leave a little absolutely su- little leave leave a little suspense for our our listeners. But yep. um, you know, it's it's good. Um, I, I love the I love the high school baseball season. Part of me wishes I can get out and see a lot of teams in Burton County, but you know, it is what it is. We will uh, we will always do our best to promote the high school baseball in, in Bergen County, and um, I'm glad to be a part of it. Yes, it's good to have you, and you got to give me a chance, Joe. I mean, this you know, I, I'll go back, I'll pick out some of the, your uh, foibles from this show, and I'll use them against you in weeks to come, but you got to give me a chance to build up a little bit of a war chest. I, I mean, well, you, I, can't, I, I, you I, can't expect great drops. You haven't even said anything stupid yet. I, well, that, it, that's coming. That, that is coming. <laughs> and, you know, you tried, you tried to get me. To say something stupid, you thought I said something stupid earlier on when I talked about, I spoke about chemistry, and and right. you said you just got done saying you can't coach it, and then you know you told me he's coaching it, but then you can't coach it, and that's not what I said. So I wish I had the ability to to have sound bites as well and record your your stupidity, but it, it just doesn't happen. Yeah, no, I get to erase all the bad stuff. That's the great the yeah. great thing about this position. You have your cake and, and you eat it too every that's week, buddy. Right. Every There's week. only one. There's only one guy who could figure this all out. That's Paging Dr. Cirillo. <laughs> we will see you next week on Talking Baseball here on North Jersey. I love it. I love it. Follow the leader.